dogs welcome bike to the channel welcome bike to the headquarters today's video is a video that's already up on youtube it is on the underdog fantasy channel as you can see we are repping there behind us that light just blew out so the underdog sign isn't working luckily you don't have to watch me sit here at my desk speak unst to you uh we filmed this following video while we were in los angeles for the super bowl weekend and basically mr hayden winks hit us with a list of i don't know 10 players or so and we were guessing their adp for the 2022 fantasy football season so we were i was horrifically wrong josh for some reason is unbelievably good at this game except for when it comes to quarter patterson we did some guessing we broke down the players and why we think they should be higher or lower than their current adp on underdog fantasy underdog has leagues going right now for 2022 best ball season so you can already get an edge on the comp start getting prepped whatever you want to do you sick sick individuals who are ready for fantasy football season so first and foremost and most importantly is to go subscribe to the underdog fantasy youtube channel first link in the description make sure you're following josh and hayden on twitter and also pete and also pete how can i how can i forget about pd pd packs man go follow those guys and subscribe to the underdog youtube channel if you enjoy the video hit the button that looks like this Subscribe to my channel as well if you want, if you're new. And uh, and we will see y'all tomorrow. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going <laughs> to... Because I put this through and then I was going to put it back <laughs> under as you're recording. You're just going to hear... <laughs>
Thank you. Thank you. I'll uh, end the show right there. Thank you all for joining Nick, me. Uh, you one did not one. beat that ass. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Oh, I, I had the, literally the closest number that wasn't enough. <laughs> this is nonsense. Um, Melvin Gordon is still under contract. Fake news. Fake news. So he is a free agent after this. So again, Javante Williams, second round pick. Javante Williams looked great in like the two or three games that he had the entire workload. Um, I understand. I understand on that you know, turn of the one, two. Reps. What about when Rogers gets traded over under oh. over under 7.8? How much that's going to propel up if Aaron Rodgers goes to Denver. If Rodgers goes to Denver or if we have news that Melvin's out, I think Javante becomes a top five pick. No doubt. I agree with that. If I they, walked past Melvin today. Should I should ask? Really? Him. Should yeah. ask. How's he looking? He, he, he had a he thumb brace on. Thumb How does he Ooh. look physically? Because we had a take from, I'm not going to drop any names. <laughs> Someone on the underdog <laughs> team said, I walked away from Radio Row today with one observation, and it was that Derrick Henry is not as big as I thought he was going to be. Whoa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, like, it wasn't me. Do that? not look at me. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Certainly God. was not me. I'm not going to name any names here, David. Yeah, not impressed by uh, the hey, big dog. dog. <laughs> hey, now I have a feeling that there's going to be a lot of year two players on this list. Who's next? Yeah, this guy, not a year two player, actually falling off the age cliff, mm. Zeke Elliott. Oh, got it. So this past year, Zeke probably went, what, 105, 106, yeah. something like that. I would say that has drastically fallen. Um, I'm going to put it roughly before expressing why in like pick 45, pick 45. I'm going to go back into the mid to back end of the third. Um, math isn't working in my favor right now so whatever the 308 is give me that yeah josh with a pretty good guess there i would say Ooh. josh you freaking cheater 45.5 no, 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 no. 45.5 no, no cheating i swear i've not looked at hayden if you think i actually did extra work you know the answer to that <laughs> that's true you know the answer to that okay so how do we feel about zeke in that range i know a lot of people who do not play the game and just watch football believe zeke elliott is Toast. I actually love Zeke at pick 45 because I don't think he's getting phased out any more of the offense than he was last season. 45, I can definitely get behind. Yeah. Uh, if we start going into the third round, a lot of these like veteran players, as soon as you can see them starting to go over the age cliff, it's pretty wise not to try to chase what their past was. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like more often than not, that doesn't work. 45, I think he's a player where you probably want to take a share or two in the fourth round, but not all the time. <laughs> Yeah, he I hates it. I think that oh no, I, our videographer spread his legs and I got. <laughs> uh, the I think that ADP is like pretty efficient. Like I would I, I would like be it. grabbing shares of him hit there. I'm also not like going 100 percent like Zeke and just because mm -hmm. he's in the in the fourth. Do, Zeke round four is that a dead zone qualification? And we got Pete on the record saying I'll have some shares of that. For sure, I'm not I'm not as dogmatic as some of the. Oh, uh, I okay, no lies. What? You can't you, lie on this couch. I got people were mad at my exposures last year because they thought they were too balanced. I didn't have anyone over 30% uh -huh. in BBM2, and people want me to be more dogmatic. So uh -huh. I'm not who you think I am, Josh. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Quick rebuttal. Where is Tony Pollard? Mm. 102. And just for the record, both under contract, both yep. are contracts really not movable. Yep. So he's back. And I think the big thing is going to be the torn PCL, I think that's what it was. He was playing through all year. If that was like a reason why he was so bad, or if that was just so his Zeke, agent, I mean, yeah, you know, make it feel better. Speak. Well, I, I mean, Zeke is never going to go back to I don't know the twenty three carries for hundred and ten yards, but he I, he's always going to be the goal line back over yeah. Tony Pollard, and we absolutely think that offense is going to put up touchdowns. Okay, so I'm exactly two for two. You've been off what like a, a combined point seven. I mean, that's incredible. You have no chance with this one, Cordero Patterson. I have no chance with this one. This could uh, be Nick, you start. anywhere, anywhere. Okay. Cordero, Big Falcons fan for CPAT. Cordero Patterson. Oh, man, I hope we resign him. I, uh, I'm i a huge fan of CPAT. He's probably my favorite player on the Falcons right now. Not so I did, one, I did one draft like – you said not Mike Davis. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave those takes. Mike you, Davis, 240 ADP. <laughs> uh, I did one draft like – Three weeks ago, I think. And I remember Cordero Patterson going like significantly higher than I imagined him going. Mm. I'd ima I think it probably settled down a little bit. I'll say Cordero's in the late fifth round, so maybe pick 60. 
Sounds I'm, like someone's going to have a lot shit. of Cordero <laughs> Patterson this year. <laughs> the shit isn't funny. Um, <laughs> I am glad you went first because I was going to be way off. I'm probably way off. Is he way off? Give me that. Let's let's hear what yeah, you say. Yeah, Josh. Come on. You can't just nail both hmm. picks and then be big. He's over for more 30, isn't he? Like 31? Yeah, he's, he's watched. 31, 32. I'm going to go with CPAT. I'm going to go with him in the third round around where like David Montgomery was going last season. That's this is way off. This Holy is way off. Shit, Josh. <laughs> this is way off. Is How 30? high are you guys on Cordero Patterson? <laughs> oh, was that hit hit us? It's like, isn't it like 110 or 115? It's 105. Is yeah. it really? Whoa. 105. No. Whoa. RB 36. He's between. That's just fucking disrespectful. That's really Miles disrespectful. Miles Sanders and Ramondre Stevenson. Okay. We're also going to have a lock it in. Sorry to the team, the risk team. Uh, we're going to have running back eligibility for CPAT next he year. He is a running back. Yes. Yeah. Um, 100 plus? That's wild. Yeah. Wait, so he was next to Miles Sanders and Ramondre? Yep. I kind of like all three of those. What do you want to say, Pete? I mean, I think that's that's about where he should be going, right? If he resigns with Atlanta, the upside there is so much higher than that. Yeah. I mean, because basically you how the the ADP settled last year is like you'd have like leads of committee backs yeah. in like what, seventh through you know, the tenth round. Yeah. And he's kind of like you could make cases either way, fringe, so he's not like the one B necessarily. I, I feel like that's the perfect know. spot. I, the Falcons absolutely sucked this year, and he was 100% fantasy relevant for at least half of it. Yeah. And then in best ball formats, obviously, that's going to take your optimal lineup. That takes the the guessing game of when those spike weeks are going to happen out of question for you. Well, the um, question, like, what do you think? How much of Patterson do you think is, like, he's earned those touches versus there was no one else and he was by far their best option to get I those. think I think he's earned them. Like, he was legit good behind one of the worst run-blocking offensive lines in the league. And then it was weird how the season ended, Hayden, in that they just, like, stopped playing veterans towards the end. Yeah. It, it felt like in the last couple of weeks, CPAT, like, wasn't getting touches at all when they were obviously out of the playoffs. And Arthur Smith even had comments like that. So I would expect CBAT to, wouldn't you say, like, 12 touches per game? Yeah, but he was also like running the hottest, like the he models. Was. My model just getting absolutely but, dunked on. By but him. the Falcons <laughs> gave them nothing. Like yeah. they were, I think, worse in the NFL in terms of red zone touchdown percentage when Arthur Smith was top five, because I said it all offseason, top five in each of the last like two or three seasons. Yeah. So like there's going to be some, like he's not going to run as hot, but as a whole, the Falcons offense should be better. The problem was Mike Davis is so bad on the ground well, that they needed to force Corderell to be the guy on the ground. I think Josh should finish his drink for being 70 picks off on Cordero <laughs> Patterson. Third round. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to stump you again. Jarek McKinnon. This was an overzet ad. Jarek McKinnon. Jarek McKinnon. Heard of him? No. Explain. I mean, <laughs> Jarek, say that free, agent, by the way, free agent, <laughs> Jarek McKinnon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 240 players are ranked. Correct. Like they have ADPs because yeah. that's how many are in a, in a draft right now. I'm going to go with... 173 for Jarek McKinnon. That's probably even too high. You son of a bitch. It's 175. Oh, I was oh, going to say yeah. 175. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. I was going to say that too. Oh, I'm walking yeah. off the fucking set right now. I'm... Uh, Don't hit so the thumbs good. up button on Look this video. Don't. Redeemed. Maybe we should have you guys write these down, you know? Redeemed. I would swear to God, yeah, I was going to use 175. Yeah. I'm upset. I'm Cut appealing this. <laughs> who, who I put to? Liz? This is three to one. Oh my this God. is three to one at the moment. No, okay. no, no. I'm not giving you that. I didn't even get a chance to guess. <laughs> we don't even know where Jared McKinnon is playing ball. Like, who is he being drafted around right now? Between him, Chuba Hubbard. Uh, oh. Yeah. I don't have somebody else. It's name. true deep flyer range yeah. down there. I, I think it's mostly all upside there. If Chiefs retain him, I think there's a little. My thesis is there could be a little Leonard Fournette there as the guy who delivers in the playoffs and people underweight how that production could carry over into the next season. But uh, McKinnon, I feel like, is just not good at football. He's had so many chances to prove it. He's, he looked awesome in the playoffs. Is that a one-game sample size? Two games? Maybe. One half of one <laughs> game? I don't know. What do, they, what do they have under contract? They have Clyde, obviously. Darrell, uh, is he a free agent? Darrell's a free agent. Jarek McKinnon's a free agent. And then they have some money to spend, so... It'll be Clyde plus somebody else. Okay. All right, next one. All right, let's pivot over to wide receivers. Michael Thomas didn't play last year. Oh, expected man, back. A uh, little bit contract stuff. Some people want him traded. but No quarterback. They have no quarterback. The The contract makes him most likely to stay. I think that if they trade him, 
they would eat like 20 million in dead money and only save 2 million. So he's probably back. Pete, do you know this one? You don't have to say it. But I know, know the range. One. Yeah. I'm going to say uh, 78. Okay. So at the end of last year, when we knew he was going to miss draft season, I should say, when he was going to miss half the year, I think he was still, man, going around like round nine. Does that sound right? Yeah. So now with no quarterback, because Jameis doesn't sound like he's going to come back and it's just Taysom Hill there. Shoot. I'm going to say in the 50s. So I'm going to go with 58 for Michael Thomas. What you got? Pete? What was that? Yeah, it's in, it's in that range, isn't it? Like 61. Yeah. Wide receiver 29. But he's between Marquise Brown and Darnell Mooney. This guy doesn't prep for anything. This is nonsense. Comes out here. He's and had just... three just bullseyes and then one just didn't even hit the That's what I do. Ball. High variance player. <laughs> I made a huge mistake. I'm going to get getting myself fired. I will be honest yeah. to the to the audience. I was certain that this would ruin my career. <laughs> Show how little I know if I do not prepare for shows. This but maybe this is the opposite. I'm just going to do less work now and be better at my job. <laughs> Yep. All right. Another pretty controversial ADP right now. Amon Ross St. Brown. Uh, mm. Basically have all the money in the world to bring in some guys. TJ Hawkinson was not playing when he mm. was breaking out. Neither was DeAndre Swift. The people, though, they love this guy. So thought process here. And tell me if I'm wrong here, Hayden. At the end of the year, he was playing in 12 personnel. Like he was playing in two wide receiver yep. sets. Now he was almost certainly drafted to mainly be their slot receiver, and he kind of had to grow into that role. So again, they have no outside players. Do we think that they take his final six games and say, okay, this is one of our two outside, two wide receivers in the field when we go two tight end sets, which the Lions are probably going to do a lot. Or do they spend some of that money and bring in like two bigger players to play in those roles? Well, they have two They have two first rounders, I think, in the draft this year. One of them super early, so I doubt they take wide receiver. But I think they have a back end of first where you could see a lot of like the prime wide receivers of the class. I'd be surprised if they don't come away from the draft with a big name wide out. Um, but after his rookie year, I can't imagine them not playing Amon Ra mm -hmm. all the time. But that being said, a lot of his production came when TJ Hawkinson was banged Legit up. Good. DeAndre Swift, who got a ton of targets, was also out for a while. So it's more so arguing against like why he won't be awesome again this year. So it's tough to really make the case. Um, so uh, like among wide, do you think he's like a wide receiver five being drafted or wide receiver four? He's going to use this information against you to make a perfect guess. No, nah, he's definitely getting picked way before wide receiver. Five. I think he's going to go in that range where like back end fourth, early fifth, where like the Tyler Whoa. Lockett's and stuff were going last year. I, I would say... I would say Amon Ra was probably around like late late forties, forty eight. I'll say. Okay, so we just had Michael Thomas, and he was 63? 61. 61. And you just said wide receiver I or overall. I, sorry, I, I think like fantasy wise, he'll be like a, be drafted as a wide receiver three ish. Okay, um, Josh, I, spit out a guess. <laughs> um, man, thank you for doing what I, <laughs> what I couldn't. <laughs> I'm gonna go overall. 57? That's a really good guess. What are you, what are you going with? It was, isn't it like 53, 54? Yeah, it's 50. He's 50? sandwiched, yep, sandwiched be between Elijah Moore and Chris Godwin. Yep. Interesting. That To me, that seems way too aggressive. That's really way, aggressive. Way too Very aggressive. aggressive. Way too aggressive. Where is uh, where's Renfro going? He was Later. like wide receiver 33, I think a couple rounds after that. 75 Which yeah. to me seems crazy, right? Because I feel like the comparison of you know Renfro to Waller is kind of similar to Amon Ra and uh, in Hawkinson, mm. and I mean we all get excited about you know rookies in their second year who flash, but like you said, there's a lot of moving parts and variables Lots. there that there's not much meat on the bone. Like he could deliver fifth round value, but like can you imagine him being a third round pick next year? Yeah. I, I can't see how he's, or sorry, the following year. Like, I don't know how that. I mean, the second they draft like Garrett Wilson or one of these stud rookies, like everyone's just going to have a panic and then yeah, he's going to yeah. drop to like the wide receiver 32. I would be surprised right. if he was a top 60 pick in August. I yeah. think that some like Will Fuller or something like that, William Fuller, sorry, uh, to Redman, <laughs> whoever named that, we we need to investigate this, the, the William Fuller. But that has shocked the best ball community. It, it the, really the has. Formality <laughs> it's of, ruining all my spreadsheets. Yeah. When I'm trying to he actually emailed in up. and said he wanted to be referred to as William, not just Will. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we're, we should call him Bill from now on. <laughs> Bill Fuller. Billy Fuller. You might need to change his name after what happened last year. Yeah. Um, where are the other lines going? Like DeAndre Swift, TJ Hawkinson, if you can pull that up pretty quick. Yeah, I know Swift was like RB10 right now. Yep. He is a second round pick, 18th overall, which seems about 
right? If you're into running backs in that range. Back up the list, Kyle Pitts, famously one touchdown, 1,000 yards. I was looking at uh, yards per route run versus man coverage, and he was like sixth, not at tight ends, among any player, all wide receivers. Okay. The people are catching on, though. Falcons player, you're going first. Okay. Um, Set the table. I feel like Pitts is going to end up getting drafted in a similar spot. Yes. As last year, because yep. the guys ahead of him are really, really solid options. Uh, I would say, let's go 54. Hmm. Okay. I, I know this offseason, you're going to do some thought-provoking content, Hayden, where you say, like, Titans don't matter. That's true. But, like, Kyle Pitts is one of those Titans that could matter. Like, he's maybe one of, what, five names preseason that we think, like, could absolutely matter and, like, impact. And he went as the tight end four. Also, Ridley's prop. I have a, a he's, he's really bad traded. feeling that he's gone. Yeah. 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 Um, I bet, again, Kyle Pitts now is being drafted as the tight end five. But overall, you guessed 53, I think I said. 53. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with my old trusted 57 again. Over there, you want to break the news here? Yeah, so I believe he's been going as tight end four, and I've been drafting him in the mid third, and he Whoa. very rarely makes it to the late third. There's been a complete flipping. I think when ADPs dropped, I think we like the initial default was like in the 40s. He's now 29th overall, ahead of George Kittle by more than a round. If you want him, I'm gonna guess in August he's gonna get steamed all the way up to the two three turn. Wait, so people I believe agree. Calvin Ridley getting traded is going to help Cal Pitts? I don't even think the Ridley stuff is factoring into it that much. Yeah, I, I think it's kind of different. I think it's it's at a point where I think Travis Kelsey's in decline. I think that George Kittle, it's been a couple seasons since he had like a truly elite season. Trey Lance and now with is, Trey Lance, yeah. Yeah, it's, I'm not sure what his ceiling is going to be. Mark Andrews, a little more competition. And all of a sudden, like, if there was one player I was going to bank on, like, okay, if he's going to average three more points in the rest of the position, yeah. like, I would say Kyle Pitts would really? have that. I, I feel like Kelsey and Andrews are just in a, a whole nother tier for me. Yeah, right now, Kelsey, 15th overall. Mark Andrews, 24th overall. Kyle Pitts, uh, 29th overall. I, I wouldn't be that surprised if Kyle Pitts and Mark Andrews are being drafted like right next to each other. Wow. wow. I, I agree. I think Andrews' ADP is, will drop a little bit. He's going real early yeah. Yeah. right now. Um, uh, I think you'll see a log jam with Andrews, Pitts, and Kittle at that 2-3 turn, like just, you said. Just from the counting stats, I mean, he had the same number of touchdowns as Lee Smith this season. It's true. But we know, like, the usage in that area of the field was so much more for Kyle Pitts. It just, he wasn't being efficient on it. Like, he, it wasn't going in his favor. So, I don't know. That Falcons offense needs a ton of work. We need to do. We need to do a lot of things. Well, it doesn't seem like it. You guys are drafted Cordero Patterson in the third, <laughs> yeah, the third round. round. Seems like they're ready to rock. All right, that's the one I got wrong. Okay, can we, can we stop doing Falcons? Yeah. We'll, all right, we'll pivot. This is another guy that everyone's going to keep moving up. He's ADP's already climbed about thirty spots. Uh, Trey Lance. Yeah. And and give me give me the quarterback. He's being drafted right. ahead of and all that type right. of thing. Has Eric Bynfor started drafting yet or no? <laughs> yeah, and yeah. he's he's been moving him up. And Leone, has he started drafting? Leone's been moving okay. him up. They are back in. Okay. Can, can we draft like the quarterback I'm rank scared. of it ADP? Because like draft the uh, figuring right. out I got the one yeah, quarterback ADP is tough. Um, he is 100% a top 10 quarterback. Yeah. I think he is quarterback seven. I'll take eight. Very good guess. He is the quarterback eight. He's sandwiched oh, between. I know you were gonna. I almost jumped in before you could say yep. it. Dak Prescott and Aaron Rodgers is, is who he's going between right now. So Interesting. zero Jimmy Jimmy G concerns, obviously. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to be surprised if he's all the way up to like quarterback five by the time August comes around. Yeah. Once Jimmy G gets traded, it's on. Everyone's already wanting to draft Debo. Obviously, everyone. There's some. I mean, there's some Brandon Ayuk truthers out there too i think he's gonna get completely steamed uh, the other the other quarterback well, everyone was brand new truthers heading into last season right. i mean his adp over debo was massive right massive uh, it's been really interesting to watch the 49ers offense in a tiny sample with trey lance versus jimmy g because the offense were very different like it was a lot of design stuff some scrambles very like far fewer over over the middle easy throws into those contested tight window things. Like there's a lot that Trey Lance has to work on, but this is why in the end, 
Kyle drafts someone like Trey is to use that rushing ability. I'm just amazed we didn't see it at all when Jimmy was healthy at times of season two. Yeah, and I totally agree. I think it was good that you did just uh, positionally for quarterbacks because the quarterback ADPs right now are crazy. Everything feels all pushed up right now. And I don't know if that's because the quarterbacks feel like the safer picks. You just kind of are more confident on their situations. But I mean, if you play chicken with quarterback in these big board drafts right now, you will get shut out. You will end up with a lot of Jared Goff and Derek Carr. Oh. There, there was an interesting time during last draft, draft cycle, like if you waited for quarterbacks, you could get Tom Brady and Matthew Stafford like in back-to-back yeah. rounds. Yeah. But then we look back and Hayden, again, I know you were going to come up with some content in the summer where late round quarterback, shout out JJ, was like a really big thing for years and years and years. And we saw Josh Allen be like maybe the most valuable asset in fantasy football this year and like coming back around to drafting quarterbacks early. Is that true? Like yeah. his value? Yeah. So I think one of the things is with half PPR – just the other positions aren't scoring as much in general. So I think in like in general right now, quarterbacks I think are being drafted way too late. I'm gonna write a column about this. Like some of the metrics and some of the advance rates on these quarterbacks are insane. It's like that top 12. I think that you can sprinkle in like a Justin Field, a Trevor Lawrence, but like basically there's like no avenues for a Derek Carr, Mac Jones. Matt Ryan, like the late round guys, the mid round guys, just sound terrible. There's no but upside. The, the big debate right now is going to be. 20 rounds. I think like last year, about half the teams in BBM two drafted a third quarterback. Now I'm going to say most of them, I would say that 80, 90% are going to go three quarterbacks. I think it's going to be pretty interesting going two of the top 12 ish quarterbacks, yeah. like grab a Lamar Jackson, Russell Wilson, and then not draft a third quarterback. But I think in just in general, uh, the quarterbacks are just scoring way more points than we're giving, giving them credit to. And I think like Lamar Jackson existed five, six years ago. Like we are, I mean, we're drafting in February. Like, yeah. We have time to figure out. Some and we understand the scoring better. We understand the, the cat's the out of the floor. bag on the Russian QBs. Yeah. too. Like it's it's, it's baked over. in now. Like everyone. I mean, even last year, wasn't there? There were rumors that Jalen Hurts, you know, might get benched, get right. traded. And he was still yeah. routinely going in the seventh and eighth yeah. round of all those drafts. Yeah. Next, Hayden. All right. Couple more here. Gabe Davis. Oh, man. Is I this, mean, is this ADP? When when did they start making this? Was this pre <laughs> like playoff or? Dad, so we we yeah we from? dropped the <laughs> tournament. What this was like last week or the week before that? Yeah. Um, I know that we had him like about one ten, so, and then since then it's like the last forty eight hours is what we're drafting it, on here. Again, I, okay. I'm I'm trying to think back to last draft cycle because the trio obviously Diggs was a first round selection. Then after that, you get the number two quote unquote pass catcher for the Bills. And you could make the argument for it being Cole Beasley preseason, Emmanuel Sanders preseason, Gabe Davis preseason. But all of those, Hayden, were going like round After nine and later. Because yeah. we didn't really know, but I think this draft season, everyone will go in with the clear assumption that Gabe, Gabe Davis, Davis is a two in this right. offense. So I believe he's a top 48 wide receiver. I believe he's a wide receiver four. Where would that put him? I'm going to guess... I'm going to guess uh, 52 overall. Overall, 52? That's way too high. Go ahead. Do you want to change your change your mind? I do. Okay. <laughs> well, you were like, why? Why <laughs> receiver 48? Like pick number I'm going to say I'm going to say 72 overall. Uh, okay. Good guess, good switch. Uh, I I think by the time drafts come around, he's going to be like wide receiver 30 ish and start to go wow much or i think people are going to talk themselves into anyone with a little bit of hype gets just thrown out dude it's in, it's insane so i think if guys like tyler boyd were going like seventh eighth round last year True. i think that's exactly where like gabe davis will be going this year so i'll go uh what'd you say 70, 72 72 don't prices right me i'm gonna no i was gonna go up to right now i would say 80 i'll go 80 what yeah i, I want to say he's been going at like mid seventh yeah, he's uh, wide receiver 34, 70th overall. Okay. I don't see him going much higher than that. I think that we were pretty efficient, got him there immediately. Uh, I think Cole Beasley's contract is definitely cuttable if they mm -hmm. want to go mm -hmm. go that route. Emmanuel Sanders, not under contract. I'm not sure if the Bills are going to get another wide receiver, maybe some depth, but Just I don't think it's... I think pay it's Isaiah McKenzie depth. and play him. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they need to Isaiah do. Isaiah McKenzie isn't getting drafted uh, much. Yeah. In this. Really? It's like 180s right really? now. Yeah. That's what he's like. Okay. Basically right next to Colby. He's my, one of my favorite picks. Right oh, next yeah. to football god, Jerick McKinnon. <laughs> so <laughs> either Isaiah McKenzie is re-signed by the Bills, which he should be, and dominate that slot, 
Or I think he would get like a really nice penny in free agency by one of these teams that like crave speed, especially in the slot, like the Jaguars. I would love for him to be in the slot with the Jaguars. Um, so yeah, that Gabe Davis is, I mean, it he, was absolutely true that the Bills did not trust him to start last season. And then it was like the post by second year bump that we got in the playoffs, but it was a bunch of those vertical routes. And obviously he just had that blast off game. Um, I don't, He's a guy that, like, even if you're nervous about drafting him, you need to have, like, some shares of him because he's just, like, he's the, the kind of guy that makes fantasy football fun, you know, because the okay. ceiling is there. It's like, you need to have a little Gabe Davis. Right. Yeah, while, while we're on the topic, just real quick, Steph Diggs, just give me overall wide receiver. He's in that second, third round range. But disappointing season. I'm guessing he was, like, what, like the wide receiver 12 per game, somewhere right. in that range. I'm going to I'm gonna say the wide receiver 8. I'll go 9. Yeah, it's wide receiver seven. Debo's going. So it's like the top five, which is Cooper Cup, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams. I think once we figure out the quarterbacks, those two or those five might tinker a little bit. Then it's a little bit of a drop off. Debo Samuel, Steph Diggs, AJ Brown, CeeDee Lamb. So hmm. I'm not sure if like the, the low end wide receiver ones don't sound as good this year compared to some of the other years. Hmm. Um, I'm not I, sure. I agree too. And like, I mean, CD Lamb's ADP, like there's a there's a big gap from that, you know, Devontae Adams to CD Lamb, and their ADPs aren't that different. Yeah, it's like 10 spots at the most. Last one. All right. I want you to rank tight ends, Pat Fryermuth, Dalton Schultz, Hunter Henry. Okay. Dalton Schultz is a free agent. Correct. That's a big deal. Yeah. Because if, he's, it's, if he's not back for the franchise tag, if they want to go that route. Yeah. If, if he's not back with the Cowboys and he goes you know, somewhere else than we had kind of have to start from zero there. I, I do think Dalton Schultz is good. Um, so you said Hunter Henry, Pat Fryermuth, Dalton Schultz. We're just raw ranking it. Those three. Yep. One, two, three. Keep it just raw dog in the um, three. Well, no quarterback on, on the Steelers right now, this other than true. Mason Rudolph, which. So I will go Dalton Schultz, Pat Fryermuth, Hunter Henry in that order. I can't take the same as Josh because we're just not teammates at you this should. point. I should. You should, though. <laughs> well, I'm not going <laughs> to. Did I nail it again? Flip the first two. <laughs> yeah, right now, Dalton Schultz, then Pat Fryermuth, yeah. then a pretty big drop to Hunter Henry. I am never preparing for a show ever yeah, again. I know. God dang it. <laughs> Our content is going to get way, 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 way worse now. <laughs> no, way better. I don't know about it's that. It's going to show up, only drink Bud Light Lime during, have to stay in LA for these shows. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the other, I mean, the other... The tight end ranking I just do not understand right now is TJ Hawkinson going like well ahead of Dalton Schultz, Dawson Knox, Where's Pat Fryermuth. He's like 70th overall. Well, the you, led the, six. you led the TJ Hawkinson bandwagon last year. I did, and I, I have some regrets about that. Yeah, so, <laughs> where's, not, mean, no, where's Knox going? Uh, Dawson Knox is 84th overall. He's the tight end eight. I would rather, Oof, I think in I my rankings, that. I think I straight up have Dawson Knox ahead of TJ Hawkinson. I mean, didn't come off the field if... Emmanuel's gone. If they don't really add a, a true number three, I mean, he's already scoring touchdowns. And like the other part is like, all right, if you draft Fryermuth, like who are you stacking with? I'm I'm not sure about that. Uh, Hawkinson, like I don't want Jared Goff. So right. if I'm already going with Josh Allen early, like, I feel like I would easily grab Dawson Knox in like hmm. the 70s. Hmm. Yeah, Knox feels like the the obvious one that's going to be rising all summer. Hmm. All right, is that it, Hayden? That's all, all the got. names. That's all. I that's got. all you got, uh, Peter. Thanks for doing this. I know you've got drafts going like every single week, if I like not multiple say, times. Thanks for doing this as if I had anything else to do. Sit around <laughs> you could chill in the pool. You <laughs> <went> for this. <laughs> I mean, Pete, let's be honest. It's it's only an awesome 75 degrees outside and we're in a mansion in L.A. And we need to, we're wearing know. full sweatsuits uh, inside. <laughs> um, people can go to your channel, Peter yeah. that where you're doing drafts just like this. Yeah. Every single week and setting those wide receiver ADPs. That's right. Nick, it is now BDGE Media. Not just your name. Yes. Expansion. A little bit of an expansion. Yeah. yeah. LLCs, paperwork, LLCs, lawyers, lawyers, <laughs> lawyers, lawyers, lawyers all day. I got to get off because I got to call with a lawyer right now. You got to hire an HR just after. I got to hire. Animal. I got to hire a lawyer to talk to my lawyers. <laughs> what I need to do. Uh, Gamby, Luke, Liz behind the camera. Thanks so much for Hayden. I am Josh. You can go and do all these drafts over on Underdog Fantasy right now. Setting ADPs. Tournaments start February end in september so get to drafting should we have a promo code off right now yes thumb war for promo code off i'm just kidding i'll develop everyone talk to y'all soon see ya